Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi there. We are discussing the quantum mechanical treatment of the various magnetic interactions of hydrogen atom. We have seen that the total Hamiltonian of hydrogen atom can be written as this is the electron Z1 term. This is the nuclear Z1 term plus A IZ. This is the hyperfine interaction term. You also saw that we could write as a two parts A0 plus H prime. So, H 0 we call the unperturbed Hamiltonian or the main Hamiltonian which includes this one that is the most uh, significant interaction is there. And the Perturbation is this. This can also be written as A S plus I minus plus times by 2. Okay. So, this is the main Hamiltonian, this is the perturbation Hamiltonian. We, we can now try to find out the eigenstates of this and corresponding energies. So, for that the eigenstate can be thought of as a product function of the electron spin and the nuclear spin. So, symbolically we write them as m s comma m i and without knowing their explicit form we can use the property that when let us say S z operates on this one, it will give me the, the electron spin angular momentum quantum number which is m i uh, m s the electron spin component of the quantum number. Similarly, I z operating on m s m i will give m i m s m i. So, these two identifies the possible component of the angular momentum. M i takes the value of plus or minus half and M s also takes the value of plus or minus half. So, we have got four possible combination and correspondingly four wave functions are there and we should get four energy levels all right. So, they are designated by plus half plus half and minus half. So, we can find out the energy of this H 0 Hamiltonian with respect to these four wave functions. How do they look like? Using this formula very easily to find out that let us say G e beta i B 0 S z operating on 
plus half plus half will give this operating on this will give plus half divided by 2 this. Similarly, I z operating on this will give Similarly, we can find out all the other terms here. Now, A, A operating on let us say plus half plus half will give so A I z. This operating on this gives plus half, this operating on this gives another plus half. So, this gives A by 4 plus half plus half. Suppose we have another one, let us say S z i z plus half minus half. So, this operating on this gives plus half, this operating on this gives minus half. The net resultant will be minus a by 4 plus half. This way we can find out all possible energies of the 4 states. So, these are given here. Let us call it here energy of this. A by 4 A by 4 and other 2 I will write at the top of this. This is E minus of minus of. This gives minus G n B time B zero by two plus A by four. So these four different wave functions give rise to four different energies, and the how they are arranged, they are arranged according to of course the various values of this. Here the, there is a mistake here. So, this is this mistake corrected. Okay. So, the major interaction is coming from the electron Z1 term here and then this will be very small contribution that will be added to that and this will be also small contribution. So, these are now shown here in this slide. So, when there is no magnetic field, then all the four energy levels are same. So, first we apply the electron Z1 term. So, the maximum splitting is due to that when the electron split is minus half with the lower energy, plus half gives higher energy. And, and then this is the interaction coming from here. Then we add the nuclear Z1 term that is here G n beta n B0 I Z. So, that splits this energy into 2 for m i equal to plus half and minus half. Plus half here gives negative energy. So, this is lower energy. Similarly, here minus gives uh, higher energy. 
Okay. So, these are nuclear Zeeman term added here. Then we add this the hyperfine interaction here assuming the A is positive quantity then I z S z when the product is negative that gives lowering of energy and the product is positive it gives higher energy. So, that is the way the further these levels are changed. So, having got these four energy levels what are the allowed transitions now? For uh, if the micro magnetic field is applied along the z direction then let us say perturbation due to the micro wave let us say micro wave in the z direction we will have this sort of operator. B 1 is the let us say the magnitude of the micro magnetic field applied in the z direction. So, this 4 energy and the 4 wave function that we have there to have transition I must get a matrix element of this kind some m i m s m m s m i and m s m i prime this has to be non zero for transition to take place. Now, here you see that this is as good as saying that m s m i s z m s prime m s prime has to be 0, but then the all these 4 energy levels are against state of s z. So, unless these are this is same as this, this will not be 0 that means, m s should be equal to m s prime that means, plus half remains plus half minus half remains minus half. So, that means, no transition this means no transition. So, micro magnetic field applied along the z direction does not cause any transition that is not surprising we have already seen earlier that the micro magnetic field has to be applied along the perpendicular direction same thing is coming quantum mechanically also. So, instead therefore, suppose you apply the h micro a along the x direction then this will look like g e b i b 1 s x. So, in the same argument now what we need here is m s m i s x m s prime m s this has to be non zero. Now, I can write s x as uh, the raising and lowering operator s plus plus s minus by 2 this one. Now, this can be non zero if this operating on this gives a function which is same as this one. This operating on this gives a function which is same as this one and what is more that this nuclear spin part is not involved in this integral. So, this can be written as non zero. So, that means, this must be i must be equal to i prime or delta i uh, m i must be equal to m i prime or delta m i 0 and here because this can either increase it by 1 unit or decrease it by 1 unit. So, that gives this selection no delta m s will be equal to plus minus 1. So, so, these are the selections for that and so those are the two transition allowed which is shown in this slide. So, here this transition takes minus half to plus half for the electron spin without changing the nuclear spin. Similarly, for the other one here electron spin changes a minus 2 to plus half again without changing the nuclear spin. So, what is the energy gap for this? We can calculate from this pair and that pair. So, 
1 delta E turns out to be G E beta E B 0 plus A by 2. This is for M I equal to plus half other delta E is equal to minus A by 2. This is for M I equal to minus half. So, the two transitions are separated by A by 2 from the position which is G E beta B 0. So, if there are no hyperfine interaction, then the energy would have been this one energy of transition. So, I see the two lines which is split, which are split from the original line position. And what is more here, if you see that this term, the nuclear given term has disappeared completely from this. So, in this arrangement, the way it appears that we do not see any interaction of the nuclear Z1 term. Now, if we do the experiment, let us say at a fixed magnetic field, then what we see? In fact, the derivation here is based on a fixed magnetic field, B0 is kept fixed here. So, that does not change. So, we vary the frequency then, B0 is fixed. So, this will be will be equal to H nu, let us call it for first transition, this is H nu for second transition. So, as a function of frequency, if we plot it, this will give a peak where B0 is fixed. So, this will give a one peak here, other peak there. The low frequency peak will correspond to M i equal to minus half, other one corresponds to m i equal to plus of higher energy. So, this center of this is exactly given by this one. So, this gap is now exactly equal to A. So, we say that in frequency unit this is exactly equal to the hypervine coupling constant because new one will be the frequency unit. Now, if we do the experiment uh, by keeping the frequency fixed but vary the magnetic field, then H nu is kept fixed. So, for first transition this will be G beta I, let us say B 0 1 A by 2 for M i equal to plus half and this is kept fixed. So, second line will be at B 0 line 2 minus A by 2. This is for M i equal to minus half. So, here frequency is kept fixed. So, if I plot this as a function of magnetic field B 0, then as this is fixed, my B 0 comes out to be H nu minus a by 2 divided by G e beta e. So, this will appear at the lower magnetic field. So, this is M i corresponds to plus of and here M i corresponds to minus of. See how it changes now. And again the exact Layer the center, the magnetic field called correspond to this one, which is given by this is the B0, then it will be at 
and the gap here delta b will correspond to so we call this the hyperfine splitting constants now we have seen this energy levels and the correspondingly we have found out the two transitions and got this relationship therefore for variable frequency experiment and variable field experiment we have neglected so far the the cross term or the perturbation term which i was saying earlier which is h prime is a by 2 s plus i minus plus a minus i plus now effect of this can be seen by considering the first order calculation and first order calculation the let's say e1 calculate given as is psi 0 perturbation psi 0 first order calculation here now here this is the perturbation here and this zero order wave functions are the wave functions that we have here this so if i write any of this one ms mi and put this here s plus i minus plus s minus i plus m s prime m i prime. So, here this is supposed to be same as here. So, I cannot have prime here this will be same as that. Now, because this is increases the uh, the value of m s by 1 unit this decreases by 1 unit for nuclear spin. So, this will be 0 for all possible these four states that we have here. So, even if we do the calculation of the first order, this term does not contribute to the energy level in any way, nor does it change the allowed transitions there. So, what we conclude from here is that all possible energies that we have discussed here and the allowed transitions they are correct up to first order of calculation and here the characteristic feature is that the center of the spectrum corresponds to the exact g value that we can measure from here and it is symmetric with respect to the center and we can ignore the nuclear z1 part altogether so with this i have shown the final slide here for example this is the hamiltonian which is good enough for our first order calculation nuclear z1 splitting gives this and then hyper interaction gives splitting here and we can get the allowed transitions from this with this we stop now.